Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So later on with the build of the power supply, I and mean, I've started making the box. You can see I've put a few things just on this bit of board here. This is going to be the actual bottom of the thing. And here are the sides and the back and everything. And that's going to go on. Actually, how if I put it the right way around? That's going to go on like that. Obviously, these things won't be sticking out over the side. And I decided to run everything off this one transformer because that seems to give the right sort of voltages to run all the different parts off. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see how I've constructed this. Put some dowling or whatever it's called at each corner and screwed it in. And I've put in a small fan at the back, so that's going to keep the regulators cool. Come across a couple of problems. As you might be able to see, the wood split when I was drilling it. Now, it didn't split because I put screws in without drilling any holes first, but for some reason, it split while I was drilling it. But it still seems to hold up pretty good, so I guess that's alright. Another problem is that when I was cutting the holes out for the meters, or just measuring the holes out for the meters, I didn't take into account the bit at the bottom of the meters, so I'm going to put the meter in I don't know how well you can see this Maybe if I turned it around a bit there's no room to put the potentiometers anyway I've started making the scales for the meters here's one I did earlier like they say on TV so I put various different voltages in and and mark where the needle is at each different voltage. There we go. There it is in sharp focus. And this is the resistor that I used to connect it with. Alright. This is the blur that I used to connect it with. It's a 47k. So, all I've got to do is do this meter, put everything in, try to figure out what I'm going to do regarding the holes. And we'll see where we go from there. You know, f this, f that f***ing phonics, it's a problem. And, 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 you know, a lot of times I think for these kind of relationships where, you know... After that little interruption there, it's time to work on the other meter. Now, firstly, I'm going to have to make the needle black because when I put it against a piece of white paper, it makes it really difficult to see, so... I'll just take care of this with a permanent marker it's got to be really gentle on this thing because these things are quite fragile and as you can see now it stands out pretty good now I put a sticky label on it this is going to be the actual thing that I'm going to write the scale on to now I've just got to cut it out to size Okay, so it's time to power up this complete mess of wires and mark out the meter. So I'm just plugging it in right now. Okay. Well, the meter there is definitely registering something. So I'm turning on the digital meter, see what we got, and it's about 20.5 volts. Yeah, there we go. And that's the other meter done. Oh, one thing that I have got a bright right on it. DC. Bolts. And there we go, there's a completed meter. Okay, well, progress is being made. I've got a lot of parts in. The cooling fan is wired up. The single rail power supply is in. That's all wired in. And I've got the meter on there, not interfering with the potentiometer. This is the output terminal strip, which is off that um, Durabrand thing. I thought it would make a good output terminal strip. So, I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you what all the different outputs are going to be. This one in the middle is for the single rail supply 
These two are going to be the dual rail supply. I'm going to have to label one of those as positive and one as negative. And here, the transformer output is just going to be directly connected. And that's going to be connected by these wires here, which also run to the part of the transformer that powers the fan. And every connection here is a ground. So, um, let's just test the... the... cat's making a noise. Can you hear that? Stupid cat, you know, he does that. He'll come in at about three in the morning and start making that noise. It's just because mum's not down there to feed him, that's all it is. Anyway, going to power this up now. This is a very dangerous way of connecting this thing, so do not attempt this at home unless you know what you're doing. Okay, transformer's connected. The fan is spinning. Hopefully it will have a decent lifespan. And the meter, the voltmeter is what is on. Again, I'm just going to connect up a simple computer fan to test that it's working. Let's just give it a little test. Oh yes, that is working. Okay, well, I've got the split rail supply now wired up. I'm going to turn the meters on. This thing actually looks like it's on life support, but let's see what we get. Okay, this one's measuring the negative out, and this one's measuring the positive. And as you can see, it seems pretty balanced. And now I'm going to turn it up. Oh yeah, 24 volts either way, perfectly balanced. Yes, it's looking good. It's looking very good. Doing this video exactly at midnight because this is how long it's been taking me. And this thing is almost completely complete. All that remains is to put a switch in here. I've now got all of these outputs wired up. Well, here's some really good news. It's pretty much complete. Now it has a power switch. I'm glad this project is just about over because I cannot tell you the trouble I had cramming all this stuff in here. I just need to secure some of these things up, some of these things down so they don't move about. The switch is a little bit floppy. The hole I made was just a little bit too big. Okay, this thing is now complete. I made a slight modification to the design of the box. As you can see, the edges are much lower now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it under the bench like this or it'll be out of the way and I'll still use it. So it's a heavy old thing as well. Oh, huh. looks like I forgot to screw something in there. That bit's still wobbling about. Strange things you forget until you start videotaping something and then it find out what you've forgotten to do, but everything is securely in. I've hot glued everything that was loose, so that's not going to come out anytime soon. <coughs> also made a slight modification to the single rail part of the supply. I've added this little transistor here, which is a spare 2N3904 I had lying around. And with that extra transistor added, this thing is a lot better. Now this is where that um, 2N3055 transistor is. You can see I've turned the thing round so I can get to the pins. And what I've done is simply connected the base of this transistor up to the emitter of this one. The variable resistor was originally connected up to the base of this one, but now it's connected up to the base of this one. And the collector is just simply connected to the positive. So it's in a Darlington configuration. And now there is hardly any voltage drop when I connect a load. So that works much better now. Alright, well, there it is. Out of the way, but not out of sight, and definitely not out of mind. And now, without any further ado, let's get to the boring sciencey bit. This is the schematic of my power supply. I know I've had to draw a lot of things in there really small, so I'd cram everything in, but hope you can make it all out. Here we've got the main transformer with the three secondary windings coming off it. Now I'll start with how the fan's connected. 
As you can see, it's connected to this winding here. <laughs> Pardon me, which is a center tapped winding. Basically, with a center tapped winding, you've got one wire here, and another wire there, and right in the middle of the winding, you've got another wire. So, you've got two lives, or two hots, whatever you want to call them, and a neutral. And with one of these center tapped windings, you can make split rail power supplies, or single rail power supplies, where you use less diodes. As you can see here, I've only needed to use two diodes to power the fan. Now that fan is running on about 14 volts from this transformer. That might be a little bit too high for it because the fan's supposed to be run on 12 volts. I hope it doesn't burn it out, but we'll just have to see how things go. And you can also see that that winding is connected to the terminal block as well. So I can, I also have AC out for my power supply. Next along, we have the regulated dual rail part of the supply. We've got positive volts ground and negative volts there. You can see how it's wired up with the rectifier and the capacitors and the regulator chips themselves. For the positive I've used an LM317 and for the negative an LM337. Now because I know one of you wanted to know more about this I'm going to go into a lot of detail about the regulated single rail supply. So firstly we'll start with the transformer. So this is the transformer the single rail supply only uses this secondary here. Now, I'm sure the turns ratio is well out because when I measure the transformer, the primary is about 25 ohms and the secondary is anything between 1 and 2 ohms. But anyway, what we've got here is a rectifier, which is made out of these four diodes arranged in this way. Now, a diode, as you can see, there's a sort of a triangle and a line, and the line um, indicates which direction the electricity is going to go, so it's going to go this way across the diode. I'll just put a little arrow to point out the direction it's going to go, so you can see it more clearly. So that's the way it's going to go across the diode. And it needs this because the transformer gives out AC, which is basically just constantly changing direction really quickly. And the rest of the parts in this thing need DC, which is electricity just, just constantly flowing in the same direction. The only problem is, when you rectify AC to DC, it's still got some of the characteristics, characteristics of that AC. So, even though it's now going in the same direction, it's still going up and down. So, to smooth that out, there's a capacitor here, which filters out most of that, but there's still a little bit of up and down ripple, so that's where these two come in. We've got a resistor here, and a zener diode here. And the zener diode simply changes its resistance and, sim and will not allow any voltage higher, in this case, 13.6 volts to go across it. So the more voltage there is, the less resistance it will have, and vice versa. So what you end up with is a very stable voltage across the diode, completely free of ripple. Now this is sort of a voltage divider, so there's absolutely no way it will work without this resistor, but I'm not going to go into voltage dividers right now. Also, we have a capacitor here just to provide some further smoothing, although it doesn't really need it, but a lot of them have it in it anyway. Now, the only downside to this, of course, even though now we've got a very steady, ripple-free DC, the current from that is so small it's not able to power anything. So, to fix that, over here is a transistor. And what that does is it takes that tiny little bit of current from the rectifier, I mean the Zener diode, and amplifies it so you've got the smooth DC with a decent amount of power behind it. Now if you open up any regulated power supply, this is basically the what you'll find inside. Some of them have a little bit more than that, some of them have, have a bit less, but this is the, the fundamental things that you'll find in a regulated power supply. Now in my power supply, I obviously want to control the voltage, so I've put a potentiometer here between the diode and the transistor, and I can control the voltage it gives out. But that has a slight drawback. When I connect any load to the thing, there's a pretty considerable voltage drop. So I had a little bit of a thought about this and finally what I did is I added a second transistor here and that seemed to make it much more stable. So as you can see here the two collectors are connected to the positive. You've got the emitter there connected to the base and obviously the emitter of the more powerful transistor connected to the capacitor to stabilize the circuit a bit more and of course that powers the load. Now that seriously cut down on the amount of voltage drop there was when a load was connected. The strange thing is that 
There is still voltage drop, but the voltage drop seems to be the same, no matter what kind of load I connect, so that's uh, kind of a bit weird. That's just one of the mysteries of life. Anyway, for those of you who want to know how, it is, how this could power even more heavier loads, you simply add another transistor and there you go. But anyway, that is the uh, regulated single rail part of my power supply, and the output of that goes to the terminal block, and there you can see the whole thing. So, I hope that's cleared a few things up. That's the end of the boring sciencey bit. And that's just about it for this edition of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So, if you want to see more of my videos, click on this schematic right now to go to my channel. Or, if you want to see more from Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click the box on the right to see the previous episode. And that's it for now, so, until next time, goodbye.